Hello YouTube friends. Here's another little advent video. Today I'm making Agnes a Christmas stocking. I have wondered whether I should sew it or knit it but I decided in the end I would felt it because years ago I used to make quite a lot of felt and I've got everything I need to do it again. This is the fibre that I've got quite a lot of that I use when I'm spinning. This is a beautiful sheep's wool fibre that's been processed in this way where it's been coloured and then combed so that all the fibres are lying in the same direction. And so felting then, you've probably felted without even realising it. When you've put your favourite sweater in the washing machine and it's gone in that size and come out this size, you've felted that by mistake. Well, I'm going to felt on purpose, but I am going to be using the same kinds of techniques that you did, if you did it, uh, when you did it by mistake. <laughs> because basically all felting requires is hot water, soap and agitation. Those three things together uh, will make this fibre, which is soft and beautiful like a fluffy white cloud, into a firm, strong fibre uh, fabric that will last and last. So we're going to make a three-dimensional object, which is just like um, one step up from intermediate. It's easy to do, but you just have to follow a few principles. And the thing that I'm going to need is this really strong plastic sheet. So this is a bag, um, a, a piece of plastic from a bag that's just a bit thicker than your ordinary plastic bag. It's got to be quite robust. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to make Agnes a Christmas stocking. I'll film it overhead so that you can see all the processes I'm doing. It's actually not as hard as you think. I'm going to make this little inset in the corner to show you what I'm doing now, there's the plastic template and I'm making this in a box so that it's all nicely contained and there isn't water everywhere. And what I'm doing first of all then is with this red fibre, I'm just laying down small tufts of the stuff going up and down, this direction, up and down. And in my squirty bottle there, I've got very, very hot water. Now I'm going this process takes a, a long time. So I'm speeding this up for you. I'm laying them a bit like roofing tiles, just overlapping one another and then wetting them down really well. Now that's, you pick that up, you touch that and it will all fall to pieces. So these little um, blue dishcloths, which is what I use when I'm making felt, just keeps all the fibres uh, behaving themselves. And now I've got some lovely olive oil soap and I'm rubbing the soap. If I rubbed that directly onto the fibres, they would just all uh, move and uh, get out of alignment. So the, the blue dishcloth uh, prevents that from happening. Plenty of water, plenty of soap and lots of agitation. So I'm rubbing that first layer and the blue cloth means that I can pick it up and turn it over. Now what I need to do with the bits of fibre that are protruding over the edge of the template, I'm going to carefully pick those up with the help of the cloth there, see? Carefully pick those up and wrap them round the plastic template. This will give me a three-dimensional object, which is what a stocking is after all. So I'm going to pick all those fibres up there and in, I intentionally went over the edges. I need to do this to make these um, this vessel um, have a middle. <laughs> okay so now the, the thing with felting is your hands are always dry when you want them wet and wet when you want them dry. So I have a towel nearby and I dried my hands off and now I'm putting another layer of this um, pinky red uh, fibre going plenty of water going in the same direction as the other side. Cloth on there again, lots more water. That's why I'm doing it in this um, plastic box so that everything stays put. The soap uh, is helping the whole process of the felting and now turn it back over again and you can see that the fibres that are protruding there, I'm going to fold those back over. So you can see what, I, what I'm doing, can't you? I'm, I'm making this 3D object. Okay, now, what's great about making felt is 
If you use different colours for each of the layers, like I'm about to do, you can see exactly where it is you're supposed to be. So I'm even I'm going over the top as well, look, because this is going to be an enclosed object. The plastic is enclosed. But now, using this white fibre, which is going to be one of the three layers, and so it's white because it's the middle layer. You're not going to see this layer. It's just going to provide structure. And as you can see, I'm making the fibres go in the opposite direction. And this again gives structure. So the red fibres went down and up. The uh, white fibres are going from side to side, which creates this uh, strength. Uh, and, and you can also see when you've got enough white fibre on, because you can see uh, very little of the red. It's great making felt. I really enjoy it. OK, back on with my blue cloth again. This cloth's really helpful. It just means that I can manipulate this uh, object while it's still very, very uh, delicate. So lots more hot spray again, lots more of this lovely olive oil soap. You can use any kind of soap. You can use washing up liquid, but uh, you can use soap flakes. You can use anything. The soap helps the uh, fibres Firstly, it helps your hand be slippy on the fibres, but it also helps the whole thing, uh, the, the, the reaction of the fibres to tangle all together. Now we've got our red, wet red uh, fibre there and the white protruding outwards. And I'm going to pick that white up just like I did with the red and fold it over all the way round. So this is it. I've speeded this up a lot. I hope the speeding up doesn't annoy you too much. But this, it would have been a couple of hours long, this video, if I hadn't cut bits out and, um, and put the fast forward on. So there's the white side then. And now with dry hands, I can put the white fibre on this side going in the um, same direction as the white on the other side. It's better for the structure of the felt to have more thin layers than fewer thick layers. This whole thing, you can imagine, can't you? It just uh, allows for a good structure with those overlapping fibres. Okay, pressing that down a bit there now. So now when we open this up and turn it over, the white layer is complete. Three layers is enough. And so the outer layer is going to be green I just finished doing this. Um, there's a pesky fly in the room. I don't know why there's a fly in uh, in winter, but there is. Now I'm going to do the green layer. And I speed that up as well. I put the green fibres again. I'm laying them, if you can see, a bit like roofing tiles. Matches my top. I like this colour. <laughs> so I'm going to rub and f turn that over. You're familiar with what I'm doing now. I'm going to turn the green fibres in. Another layer of green on top of that. Wet that down, soap it down until that and fold it over so the whole thing has three complete layers and I'm going to start talking again in a minute. So um, I'll come back to this little side bit when there's a bit more to say. Here we go. The piece of plastic is inside, preventing the layers, the pink layers that I put on first from sticking to each other. That's the, that's the function of the plastic, apart from to give me a very clear template to which to work. That plastic will stop the pink sticking to the pink when I do this next process, which is going to be felting it. So in order to felt it, it's going to be really nice and wet. This is hot water in here and the hot water helps the fibres to open up and then the rubbing and the soap helps them to tangle together so that they create a fabric rather than just loose fibres. 
So it's very delicate still at the moment, but I can lift it up. I'm going to be very tentative with it until it starts the process of felting. I want to be careful not to squash these edges out so that it forms a ridge. I actually want, to, when I'm felting this, I want to felt it by picking up the edge and rubbing these edges together here. This next bit is going to take a long time and what I'm going to do is just gently rub so that the fibres start to felt together, apply a bit more soap, a bit more hot water and so now I'm going to just spend a good long while, half an hour or more, just felting, just gently rubbing and as I rub this I can feel the fibres getting more and more firm under my hand. They're not at the moment, they're very loose indeed. I could undo this in a moment if I was to rub too hard. But soon, once these fibres start to felt together and shrink down and tangle into one another, then what we'll have here is Agnes's Christmas stocking. I'm going to do this for ages, guys. I'm just going to be rubbing as I feel it getting firmer under my hand with the soap and the, and the water. I'm going to rub harder and harder. But I'm always going to be careful that I don't flatten out these lovely edges because this is going to be a three-dimensional object when it's done. Okay, this is going to take me ages, so I'll be back soon. So now you can see after a good long while of rubbing just how firm that um, fibre is now. I can pick it up, I can rub it really hard, it's felted. I'm careful to rub the edges because in a three-dimensional object like this, the edges are the bit where you could really mess it up. And I don't want to do that. So I'm rubbing the edges really carefully. You'll see why at the end. And then I judge that it's um, time now to take out the plastic template. So there we go. I get some scissors now. And because it's enclosed, fully enclosed, cut the top off there. That little bit there we don't need. And then you can see when I open it up, the red has not felted to the red because of the plastic. You can see the white and the green, the layers really evenly. And then I'm going to twist out the template. That's done its job now. And then I can get my hand inside and we can have a look at those seams and see if I flattened them. They look pretty good to me. That's why I took my time, because I wanted to make sure that... Um, these seams were continuous and not you couldn't tell where the seam was. So now I'll get my hand in and I can rub really firmly because this is now fabric instead of fibre. I'm going to turn it inside out so that I can give it a, a rub on the inside and see what that looks like. You get very clean hands doing this and very pruney fingers as well. OK, and now I'm going to take you over to the sink and finish this process off. So we've come over to the sink now and I've got you propped up on a cardboard box uh, next to the sink because the next thing we're going to do requires hot water and cold water. Now, here's our stocking then. And I've turned it inside out so that I can rub it from the inside. What I'm trying to make sure is that where... I folded over the fibres to make the join, to make this three-dimensional object. There isn't a ridge here. And that's why I took a long time, I took care to make sure that I was rubbing these uh, really carefully. Then I cut the top. I like that the top's a little bit wavy like that. You can see the, you can see the little, maybe, the little white area there that was the middle layer. 
and I've turned it inside out so as to better rub it but I actually quite like it that way round uh, I might have it that way round I might turn it back the green way round I'm not sure but just before we do the next stage just look there's our plastic template there and you can see can't you that the stocking has shrunk just a bit and I'm going to put this in this is very hot water it's out of the tap but it's still really really hot so I'm going to press it down with this thing here now what the hot water does it relaxes all the fibers like it is hot very hot it relaxes the fibers and then plunging it into cold water which is what this is makes the fibers oh you can feel it it makes the fibers go all firm again so i'm going to put it in the hot again now very very hot very very hot and then in the cold and this helps the fibers to stay completely firm so that the whole thing's not going to unravel again and i'm going to do that a few times i can feel them relax when they go in the hot water and then I can feel them cinch back up again and it kind of completes the felting process. Now all the fibres are firm, beautifully uh, felted, my seams are neat and tidy and uh, I'm not sure are we going to have it that way out or the other way, I don't know yet. But that's cute isn't it?